Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast roundup. There's plenty of racing coming up, actually. There's uh, more than you would imagine for this time of year, early in 2024. But first up, we're going to talk about some news. We're not going to start with the obvious motorsport news, which, of course, uh, F1 is dominating as per normal. Lots uh, to talk start... about there. There is. But we're going to start quickly because I know this is a motorsport podcast, but there is motorsport on our new TV show uh, going on Prime Video, which is Amazon Prime Video, uh, on the 16th of February. Uh, which is less than two weeks away. My goodness. And we're super excited. The messages we've had, the feedback we've had has been incredibly positive head, and we're very glad. Head to Love Cars. Head to our YouTube channel where we go through looking ahead to the whole series. So there's, there's lots for everybody. Old cars, yeah. new cars, diesel cars, Porsche Le Mans cars. So uh, yeah, hopefully you'll, you'll come and join us. In for, and also you can catch up with the first thing. Warm up. You've now got two weeks to go to ITVX if you're in the UK. Uh, catch the first series, uh, have a look at that, and then yeah, the second series, we're so excited, is going on Amazon Prime from February the 16th, around the world. Yeah, some other, oh. Isn't there some other TV, like um, automotive show going on on Amazon uh, Prime Video on the 16th? I read a small, small headline that, yeah, yeah, apparently the penultimate series of something <laughs> is out, is released on the 16th. Of course, some bloke, of, that beer, bloke the frog's beer on telly, he's got a of new course. show. Mr. Yes. Clarkson, Hammond and May launched their show too on the 16th of uh, February, the same day as us, we're, coincidentally. We're, we're pretty, we're pretty honoured to be going, going up the same day as them. But, you know, once you've seen their stuff, you know, come back to real the real world with uh, love cars on well, the road. But, but joking aside, it's completely different. And, uh, you know, ours is a proper old school car review um, uh, show. So it's proper, with proper fun, old school. With fun and laughter. Yeah. Yeah, we with have fun. plenty of fun and laughter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and of course you mentioned uh, Group C Racing, which is uh, which is in their lovely item, but also the pinnacle of o- motorsport is in the item Caterham Racing as well. So oh. I bet you all can't wait for that. <laughs> so let's kick off with some Formula One news. There's some news, oh. Tiff. I know Andretti's dominating, but let me just oh. start with a bit of gossip. Lewis, Lewis. No, 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 no. Motor, I know motorsport cannot stay out right now. Formula One cannot stay out of the headlines. I'm going to start with I don't like. Gossip, but there is a, a, a no, it's more than a rumor now that uh, Christian Horner uh, has just been accused of um, inappropriate behavior by a, a female <sighs> member of staff. Now, you think that you shouldn't be charged or you shouldn't be put under the spotlight? And no, no I, I, I think it's just so on the old, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty. Now, politicians, sportsmen, comedians, disc jockeys, you know, the challenge comes in. You have to resign. You have to step aside from everything. You know, I just I think it shouldn't be in the press at all. It should the lid should be kept on it. And I think if you get accused by someone, you know, you shouldn't be allowed to go to the press until it's been proven. Um, you know, it's terrible for Christians. They're about to launch their new team. You know, maybe you know who knows. But I just don't think it should be in the press. Therefore, I wouldn't make any personal comment on it at all. I almost think when a politician or whoever. Uh, hands are notice here, and I almost think it's almost an admittance of guilt. Personally, well, you, that's yeah, you're how I made see to look it. guilty. You're, you're told yeah. to step down, and if you do step down, as the company tells you to, or the BBC, wherever you work for, it is. I agree. It looks like you're admitting guilt. You know, there's... There, there is a saying: "There's no smoke without fire." But it's you're, you're right. It, it's who knows? Well, it's who fire. knows? And there's fire. All... The fire is a female employee complaining. So there's, that's the fire. Whether it's true or not, we've got we've got no idea, so we, we can't two, comment. Two sides to every story as well. So uh, hope that hope that cleans itself up in the wash. Uh, speaking of cleaning itself up in the wash, this Andretti nonsense, <laughs> farcical, just the charade that the F1 has turned out to be. I think I don't think there's anybody that I've seen has supported it other than the F1. Well, Martin Brundle again came on. I saw the Sky Sports interview. Martin's so clever. He's so st- he starts off by saying, of course, a race fan. You know, I want to see 22 cars, 24 cars, 26 cars. I want to see more drivers. You know, I think we need more drivers in. But he slowly sort of steps back to the political line and sort of says, you know, these teams that have invested billions, they spent billions to make Formula One what it is today, in his words, um, and so why should they allow someone to come in when they've well, I started sort of thinking about trying to approve it or explain it. And I said, hold on a minute. This is a business. Are we talking about they built 
a business like Apple or something up, you know, they've got a business. It's a sport, first and foremost. All those teams from their roots came into it as a sport. You know, they wanted to show off their brands uh, and compete on the racetracks to entertain people because the people that are working for the racing team, you want to be a race car designer, you want to be a mechanic, you know, you want to be the driver, you want to be the assistant, you want to be a, the cook or a chef to supporting a race team. And it's a sport. And I think the fact they've invested billions, well, they've invested billions to be at the top of the sport. Not, and they've made not billions. For, not to get not money made... back. Well, exactly. Yeah. yeah but, but the point is, they haven't invested billions as a sort of company trying to make a profit. You know, they'd like yeah. to make a profit, get money back. Yeah. So I don't think that that holds. The fact they spent billions, they spent billions just to be at the top of their sport. You know, the sport. Well, and, it, it's... and it helps develop the, the, the other parts of the oh. business. So Ferrari, for example, that lots of the Formula One technology has filtered through to road cars over yeah. the years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, same with with many of the others as well. On the um, Williams, you know, but but to name a few. So no, that doesn't wash with me either. I have to say, I think it's a dreadful decision, awful yeah. decision. Uh, yeah. I, I feel sorry for Andretti, and and you know, oh yes, but it will make him. We'll give him more than he'll give us. Well, he's a, he's not he's not a bad driver. He's got a little bit of pedigree. <laughs> he's won bloody everything. He's well, Mario. Yeah, he's certainly yeah, got some, just, he's certainly got some pedigree. One of the kings of our sport. I think. Uh, you know, they're saying it might not be competitive. It doesn't matter if it's not competitive. I don't care if it's a second lap slower than the Haas or whatever is at the back of the grid next this year. Um, I don't think that matters. I think it's just a sport. And, you know, they may have built the sport up and they may be earning millions out of it now. But you, know, you can't bar people from your sport. Well, they can because they're a little clique. Well, they can because they have, yeah. But, I mean, the tub, the, no, we the don't want is, them. But nobody cares about the old-fashioned enthusiast like us. This is the sad thing. You know, Formula One form are taking it to this profit-making Las Vegas and Miamis and Madrids of this world. They're charging tracks, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 million uh, to, to come and run their little circus for them. So they're in, a, they're in the show business world I, now. I wonder, I wonder if IndyCar really strike while the iron's hot. And if IndyCar started coming to the tracks that they're dumping, these iconic historic tracks that yeah. Formula One are dumping, if IndyCar were clever, they would come and take over those tracks and do a race there. And because because that's what well, we want to see. We want to see okay, racing. Well, most, but, but you know, <laughs> the, the fans are there just as sort of, a, they get in the way nowadays. It's the corporate tickets <laughs> that really matter, not the fans or the banks, which they, they suffer. So um, money make money making machine, and I feel it sorry does. for Andretti and for fans like us that wanted to see it really badly. But luckily for Formula it. One, all that went to the background quickly when we were all wow, upset that about was, that was Lewis, timing, wasn't it? Lewis <laughs> has taken over the. I mean, it's very much the Horner's now taken over from Lewis, and so now having Formula having been in the dumps, that came up, and now it's in the dumps again in the press. But the Lewis thing, I think it's fantastic news. And what's your opinion? I think it's brilliant. I think you know he's doing what he wants to do. I think. Every racing driver dreamt of driving for, for Ferrari. And I think Lewis has wanted to. And I don't care if he sort of, if it won't work, that he loses out or someone else wins. He's, I think he's shrewd because he went to Mercedes because Nicky Lauda tapped his shoulder and said, well, I think you'll find Mercedes is going to be the best car in two years' time. So he jumped shit from McLaren. And true to Nicky's word, you know, McLaren had that amazing, not McLaren, Mercedes had that amazing engine coming along that, you know, won them. Um, so I'm sure he's checked out how uh, Ferrari are getting on with their 2026 new regulations, the new engines, 50% power from electric, 50% from the from the engine. And he's sort of got an eye probably, he's been in meetings about Mercedes plans, I would have thought, you know, for uh, 2026. So uh, he's not that stupid. I, th I think he probably thinks he looks good in red. I think he'd look good in red. So well, think... look, at, look at who he's following as well, the likes of Vettel, Alonso. I know. Um, yeah, it's so wonderful. It's, it's wonderful. It is good. Yeah. And, it, and, and yeah, the most popular, the most, not the most popular, well, they are the most popular, but the most successful team ever in, in Formula One. Um, but I, it just, the only question that it leaves me with is that, well, not question, it's just, I think that Mercedes are probably not going to be competitive this year for Lewis well, to make no, that I decision. But I, but I I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm Every, Everyone's saying, you know, wrong. will Ferrari bring Lewis his eighth title? Will Ferrari? Everyone's saying that. <laughs> I'm saying, so, hold, hold on a minute. How about Mercedes bring him his eighth title? Because everyone's redesigned their cars. Haas of the end, the first launch this week, I think first ones to see. And, and of course, they've now got side pods like Red Bull's side pods. Uh, you know, Mercedes is going to go that way. I think after the first year of experimentation, or well, two years, isn't it now? 
um, of the new regulations. They've all sussed what Red Bull did to be so dominant. So I mean, they're not mugs all these other teams. So I think the pack will close down. It'll be even closer probably in 2025, you know, for the final year of the new regulations. So I wouldn't put anyone out of, of finding a little something, you know, following Red Bull's concept and then finding something a little extra. So I wouldn't put anybody out. Okay. This well, I just hope Max doesn't but it, dominate but it's, like he did last year. The, well, I don't want to Max dominate and it's competitive, but if it's not competitive, it's just the most boring uh, season yeah. ever. But, 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 so but, but, no, but it won't be boring because the in-team in rivalry is intriguing now. So it's set up now, the three big teams. So we've got... Um, Sergio Perez under the cosh so we've got looking at him for us that's a big thing the, the Red Bull problem with Verstappen and, and Sergio we've now got the Mercedes team knowing he's leaving they were assembled towards the end of the year we won't let him know what we're doing for the next year you know and so what's good with the garage atmosphere there with George are they going to favour George and you know team orders will come to put Lewis behind so the, the chemistry in, in Mercedes is interesting because Ferrari, you know, science thinks he's God's gift, you know, and uh, we already no, had No, he it. does not. No, he, he does, does not. He thinks no, he's the he best. Doesn't. A month ago, whatever it was, you know, when they gave <laughs> um, Leclerc, you know, a, a multiple-year increase in their contract, and no word about Carlos. So it was always... I, been, what's I going think on? he's one of the most humble and nicest men on the grid. Yes, but he also... He has an entourage. Remember that seen that what's that fictional TV his, show that yeah, documentary his cousin, thing? His cousin's his manager. Yes, it was really annoying in that. So that's almost one of the reasons I only ever watch half a series of what's that thing called? <laughs> Drive to Survive. <laughs> Drive to Survive. Because her cousin was really annoying. Um so yeah, he's, he's very talented. You know, I, th I think it's pretty bad news for Bottas because I think he'll probably go to Audi is the most likely, or oh, sorry, not Audi, he'll go to is that the Visa card team? Or is that no, it's the Spark team, isn't it? Spark. <laughs> what, what are they called now? Cash App. Is no, it? Cash no, App is, is the other one. Cash App yeah. is the Alpha Tower. Red Bull, Spark yeah. no, for yeah. something. The Alfa Romeo team. Yeah. So I think they've got one more year of Spark before it becomes Audi. And so I think maybe... Well, he's, he's got a little Audi, Audi, Audi link with, uh, with his father as well, with the Dakar car. Yeah, so, Dakar. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've forgotten that. Good point. So a bit of chemistry in Ferrari is not going to be that good, is it? When he's uh, declared his chosen boy. So there's lots going on. And I quite like... So, wait, so, wait, so, so uh, and Alex will go to Mercedes, you think? Well, no. Albon is the big story. He was going to be... Um, for Ferrari was the, one of the big things. And everyone seems to call Alexander Albon at the moment. He's the... He's the and I'm great. Character, lovely, positive, yeah. smiling, yeah. unmoding. So he was rumoured for Ferrari if science didn't perform. But now he's rumoured to go back to Red Bull is the hot top. So Perry, he's the one on Perez's shoulder. Right. So Sergio okay. will have his... And then the intriguing one, I mean, I'm looking at, looking down for the end of 2025. <laughs> there should be a huge upheaval in drivers. I'm looking forward to it now. So please, I want, please I be an upheaval. Bottas, I want about seven out. Yeah. Bottas, Hulkenberg, K-Mag, love you, K-Mag, love you, Hulkenberg, but time's up. Perez... Sergeant, unless he really performs, and Zhao. I want them all out. Stroll, out. So we could have a pretty hard enough young drivers to take Ricardo, all those slots. Ricardo, didn't so. mention him. Ricciardo. No, Ricardo. Yeah, of course, Ricardo. Yeah, another one needs to move on. But a fascinating thing for Mercedes, because now we're thinking, oh, there's a big job at Mercedes. They're already talking about it. It's Italian kid. I mean, this Italian kid. I mean, this is Andrea Kimi uh, Antonelli, 17 years old. Absolute stunning karting. Just one He just sounds karting. fast. He just sounds fast. Well, no, his, his dad obviously <laughs> was a Kimi Raikkonen fan. Um, it, it, he's, he did karting for years. Then his, his first year in Formula 4, he won both the Italian and the German Championship, winning over half of the races in both of those two series. He then last year moved to Formula Regional, um, Middle East, which is going on now, won that. And then this yep. then during the season, he did Formula Regional Europe, won that. Um, Dobbs, so he hasn't done Formula the, 3. And it's all relative. Now, these these are not easy races to win. No, it's no, no, super no, competitive. No, you no, need no. luck. You need everything going on your side as well. This is Verstappen-esque territory we're yeah. moving into this. And he's now doing Formula 2. And the interesting thing, which is a bit worrying for the Brits, is that he's now with the top team, with Prema, against Prima. Oli Behrman. So yeah. Oli Behrman. So that's a really fascinating. Because Oli Behrman is a Ferrari. Uh, reserve driver. They promoted him now, not just for a, a test driver, but he also will be at the Grand Prix so that 
should Carlos get tripped up and fall down the stairs, it would be Ollie Behrman making his Grand Prix debut at Ferrari, which could be incredible. Um, so that's a fascinating story to see how Andrea Kimi Antonelli goes up against uh, uh, Ollie Behrman. So Formula One suddenly become interesting now over these last few things happening. I know the races will still be a bit processional, but I think the racing will be better. There's now a lot of intrigue in each garage, which makes for a bit of friction. We always like a bit of friction and scandal. And um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, once again, I always start, I always end a Formula One season depressed by it. <laughs> but then because I've been a Formula One fan since for, for the last 60 years, um, you know, I'm still a Formula One fan at heart. Much as I hate the modern cars, the hybrids, they're so heavy and so large and can't be driving, you know, I'm getting fired up again. But how long have we got to wait? Check my new calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Our rain test, February the 21st to 23rd. So we wait three weeks for testing, which always doesn't tell you anything. And then, of course, the Bahrain Grand Prix, March the 3rd. So, so it's not far off. It's only a matter of weeks away. Yeah, all hotting up. Scandals um, aside. I, I've just noticed, <laughs> for those of you who are watching and not listening, my two third place trophies are there. I was doing an unboxing of V Box very kindly sent me a new V Box for this year, and I was doing an unboxing, so I thought I'd better put something motorsport behind. Not quite the same as you behind your head. A few old bits dark. of tat yeah. over there. Bits of tat. I got two bits of plastic third places. <laughs> two, two third pieces. <laughs> anyway, so it is hotting um, up in but- Formula One. Uh, I can't wait for the testing. It doesn't tell you that much, but it should no. at least give us a bit of an indication. And of course, over the next couple of weeks, all of the cars are going to be launching their new liveries. Tip, super oh. excited about that. I have no We've doubt. Had, I saw um, Williams today look about the same as Williams. Haas looked the same to Haas. I can't notice any difference. I never bother. <laughs> the Trump's annoying thing is they won't keep the livery because they go to Monaco, a different livery, and the crash helmet's it's a different livery. I hate that. So annoys me. Yeah. If you want a livery, the law should be you keep your livery. Um, but of course, talking about young drivers, they are all at it again at this time of year. There's the down in New Zealand going on at the moment, the Formula Regional Oceana, where now we don't know how competitive it is, because I don't know how many, but this um, Polish, a uh, half Polish, well, Polish British driver, Roman Belinsky, that uh, came up through the ranks in Britain, raced in Genetas, then British Formula Ford and GB3, and didn't really feature, to be honest. Um, he was seventh in GB3 with three wins. Um, then he went off and did Formula Regional Europe for two years, finished 18th and 21st. Now all of a sudden he's leading Formula Regional Oceana down in New Zealand. Um, but you see, he's only 18. You don't know whether either the opposition is weak or because he's now 18, he's probably, maybe he's finally flourishing. This is the thing about driver development. It's often you too quickly write someone off, you know, because they're a bit rubbish when they were 16 and 17, you know, in Formula 4. So, who knows, maybe Roman Belinsky will come back to Europe and a star in Europe. Um, Formula, uh, Formula Regional Middle East, we've got uh, Taylor Barnard uh, chasing uh, Tuka Tapanen, who's this Finnish protégé. He's a Ferrari, I think he's a Ferrari. It'll sponsor by one or the other. So, it's great to see Taylor Barnard right up there. Uh, and in the babies, the Formula 4 UAE, young British kid Freddie Slater's lead in the championship. He's about halfway through the Middle East Championships. Um, so it's exciting for Freddie. A lot of people rate Freddie Slater. It's still a long way from Formula One. And of course, that's the series where Dorian Pan, this French girl that we've been supporting, thinking, could she be the, the one to be? But she's had a bad last weekend. She had a couple of the, the reports, the race reports. It just there is so much contact. And, and I blame these modern circuits. You know, they're out in those Middle East tracks where you can just run off. You can take a wild punt up the inside, outbreak yourself, shoot off. You see so many people coming back on and using that momentum to overtake the next corner, and there's not enough penalties. So I hate these track limitless tracks. Um, so Dorian had a bad couple of races. She was she had a couple of fifths, but she's down at uh, ninth in the points at the moment. Out of 37 young you know, drivers, so she's still doing a great job. Um, meanwhile, that was the only race in Middle East New Zealand. The only other race going on last weekend was the NASCAR, the Coliseum, the Bush Lights Clash. It used to be Bush Clash, but obviously now with motorsport getting a bit more, you know, proper light clash this ridiculous quarter mile 400 yard track in the coliseum it's not a championship round it's just a showboat season where they all bang into each other because it's so slow but denny hamlin dirty denny hamlin they all booed as usual um he won it from kyle bush and ryan blady the current champion so the top guys get to the front whatever uh, but talking of nascar of course if you want to go netflix now um they've got their version of uh, the drive to survive 
and people are rating it quite a lot on the internet. It's called NASCAR Full Speed. Have you so, seen it? I watched the first one. It was about Dirty Denny Hamlin, so I couldn't watch too much of it. Dirty <laughs> Denny. Woo -woo. So I know I keep on campaigning for you to watch NASCARs more and more, the viewers on this. Um, not every race is exciting. They're not all brilliant. But, you know, if you want to get into the mood of NASCAR, the same way as the Americans have taken to Formula One, thanks to the fictional stories that come up and drive to survive, <laughs> um, you can now go and watch the fiction of NASCAR. Get to know the NASCAR drivers. You, NASCAR, so, you've got a race every weekend this year. Every weekend from Daytona 500 on March, the February 18th. Wow. Um, so, I so saw have, a look, some, have a look at the NASCAR I, behind the scenes. I saw something online and it said that uh, your man, number five, Carl Larson, is the best racing driver, period, of all time. Not NASCAR, best Ooh. racing driver of all time. Probably. Who, you know, who's the best racing driver? Who's the best far. driver of all time? Well, Jim Clark. Jim Clark. Jim Jim Clark. Who did NASCAR? Won Indy, did NASCAR, did saloon cars, did sports cars, did Formula One, did Formula Two, did Tasman series. What, what about Sebastian Lowe? Nobody's got there, but nobody's up near Jim Clark. Nobody. Okay. But, but mentioning Larson, of course, this Indy 500, he's doing the Indy 500. His first ever race in a single seater since he was like a kart racer. So it is a fascinating story of. Last the number five. He finished fifth, by the way, in the uh, in the um five thing. finishes the bush five. clash. Um, it's very subjective, isn't it? If you go on uh, on world championships alone, I wonder who the wonder who's won the most world championships. Obviously, Lewis Thumbs. I was, I was going to be. You have to look at the win rate. Eight. The only thing to look yeah. at all these most points and most titles. I mean, the drivers have a twenty year career now because it's so safe and they don't get yeah. injured. Um, you have to look at the, I don't know the facts, but I think Jim Clark won 50% of his Grand Prix or 40%. Um, so that's the only fact to look at, I think. And of course, in those days, the reliability was horrendous. You know, Clark yeah. lost two championships because the car broke down in the final round and he got beaten. Um, so uh, reliability was, was a big problem, though, Sean. But uh, you look at Clark's pole positions per Grand Prix. Did you meet ratio. him? Did you meet Jim Clark? A couple of times I went for an autograph, but I am a bit busy, you know, definitely. I didn't say Tiff, he didn't know who I was. Young boy, I think he probably said. <laughs> Everybody loved you. He was just a gentle. He would never bang wheels with anybody ever. You know, you wouldn't even think of cutting anybody else on the track because if you, if you bang wheels in those days, you end up vaulting into a tree. So that's why they didn't do it. <laughs> Whereas, um, so, but next week, what's on next week? We're not, no racing hard. Two wheel action next week. The Motor GP boys out for the first official test. They had a had a shakedown last week, which only the non-regular, I thought the Ducatis could go, and none, none, none of the world, the works riders could go. So in fact, Pedro Costa, being a rookie, our favourite GP3, GP2, not GP2, Moto GP, Moto3, Moto2 superstar uh, champion, he actually did the fastest times on his KTM. But to, on Tuesday, tomorrow, starting in Malaysia in probably about six hours' time, they're all out. So the intrigue is going to be how fast can little Pedro Costa be on a KTM. But apparently bigger headline, of course, how fast is Mark Marquez, who's now on a Ducati, uh, one of the satellite teams. He's only got last year's bike. He's not a factory bike, but uh, that's the big thing. Uh, everyone's fearing Marquez coming back on Ducati. Um, I think there is some racing done. There's, I don't know what it's called racing. I think it's called, oh, no extreme extreme <laughs> something maybe not actually maybe that's not happening next week i've got my week strong on my title what's coming up sometime soon i think it is this weekend i haven't even bothered to put it on the title calendar <laughs> so, if you can be bothered or if you can find it there are some beach bug in saudi everything happens in saudi in february but there are some beach buggies bouncing around and there you have it then we all get going season will kick off but uh, Formula One's still in the headlines, and long may it remain there. For and good Friday, reasons and bad. Friday the 16th of February. You won't need any racing. It's a prime video. Not for the Grand Tour, for Love Cars on the Road, please. I love cars. <laughs> I love <laughs> Love Cars. Week. Love Cars. Oh, and if you haven't seen it, love love have cars. a look, as Tip said. Have a look at the video on uh, YouTube. It gives you a bit of a, an insight into... The, the various cars that we got on the show. So, yeah, it's worth worth a quick watch of your time. Thanks for joining. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>